Hello and welcome to our show, Film Talk with AJ Dean. I'm AJ Dean, your host, and I have the amazing and very fashionable co-host with me and a wonderful actor, Paul Vato. Hey, Paul. How are you? Hi, AJ. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited about tonight's show. Thank you for calling me fashionable. I didn't even realize that. I just have this simple hoodie, but uh, it's, it's <laughs> nice. It keeps me nice and warm because it's freezing in las vegas it must be around 55 <laughs> oh well you look so put together so you are just a fashionista out on the las vegas strip so thank you for representing us so well you know we've got a wonderful and very fun guest tonight paul his name is eugene mandelcorn we met him on clubhouse he's from he is uh, also from first features film production. It's his own company. And he's going to talk to us a little bit about that. And he's a producer, writer, and actor. Let's give him a very, very special welcome. Hello, Eugene. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm I'm fine. I'm fine. I hope all of you are, are fine too. We're doing great. <laughs> we are doing wonderful. So it's so great to have you here, Eugene. Um, we've got a lot of fun things to talk about. Um, so let's get right to it. I've got a couple movie posters on screen. Uh, one is called Le Lead the Way, and the other one is called April Flowers. I'm sorry. Showers. April Showers. Showers. April Showers. <laughs> I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> See, we're already giggling, right, Paul? Yeah, 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 yeah. April Showers. April <laughs> Okay. How did I get April flowers? Okay. Let's it's called, talk. it's uh, maple showers. Oh, April. Got it. <laughs> maple syrup. Okay. Oh, I love that too. Okay. So let's talk about, <laughs> let's talk about those first. Um, let's talk about lead the way, because this is kind of a really cool film, Eugene, that um, did you write, produce and direct? Uh, I wrote and produced. Okay. I don't direct because I've tried it before and I'm a lousy director. <laughs> so okay. I leave it to the people who have that expertise. I understand completely. Now, this is a fascinating concept for a story. Uh, it's about, tell us what it's about. It's about a young man who's blind and autistic. Is that right? Yes, Patrick Lee is blind and autistic. He's legally blind and autistic. The perfect candidate for president of the United States. There you go. <laughs> Problem solved, right, Paul? That's right. I like the way you stylized lead the way, L-E-E, because -E, that, that's, of course, his last name. That's, yes. uh, I, I'm always up for a, for a nice pun. So I really like the way you stylize Well, that. that's the big chant. Every presidential candidate has a chant. Patrick Lee, lead the way. Patrick Lee, lead the way. <laughs> okay. Now you also have a you also have uh, the poster behind you, and it says the first solution in the history of the cinema. The first, the first solution film in the history of the cinema. Ah. Everything with first features is a first, and this is the first solution film in the history of the cinema. So it's a whole new genre, the solution genre. Let's talk about that, because this is what you are being known for. This is what you've been writing for over 50 years, solution-oriented films. Talk, Tell us about how you came up with that. How did it start, Eugene? Well, it started, I came a fraction of a second from death. What and happened? it changed my whole life, huh? What happened? Well, I could, if I told you the story, it's a movie in itself. I was living in a tent in the middle of the city. And uh, I didn't consider myself homeless because I was washing dishes at night in a restaurant. And that's where I got my meals. I got free meals in the restaurant. 
and I lived in a tent. But then I, when I had enough money, I got an old Volkswagen van and I lived, moved my tent into the van and that became my mobile home. I could travel. And eventually I met some other young people and they were uh, moving into a two bedroom, old two bedroom house, not two bedroom, an old two story house, I'm sorry, old two story house. But all of them, had, or I didn't have enough money to rent one of the rooms. So I rented the garage and I moved my bed into the garage and I was on cloud nine. I thought, wow, I'm really moving up in the world because before I wasn't doing very well. So, uh, and I fell in love with one of the young ladies living in one of the upstairs rooms. She was gorgeous. And I was always tongue-tied. I could not, if I met her in the kitchen or living, I could not get out a word edgewise. I couldn't even talk to her. Finally, after several months, I finally got the nerve to talk to her and I asked her out on a date. And to my, my I, I couldn't believe that she said yes. So we went out, um, we're going to a new disco um, tech called, um, what was the name of it now? Oh, Finnegan's Wake. That was the name of it, Finnegan's Wake. We're on our way there. We're on um, on the freeway. And uh, I couldn't help looking over at her once in a while. You know, I couldn't keep my mind on the road because I couldn't believe I was with this gorgeous woman. And then suddenly I realized there were no other cars on the freeway ahead of me. And then I looked, I looked in the rearview mirror, no cars behind me. And then I saw the lights flashing behind me and I heard the sirens. I thought, oh, they must be after someone. And then I saw lights coming towards me from in front and heard more sirens. And we were pulled over, we were surrounded by seven police cars and the, the young lady next to me, she was going into hysterics. She didn't know what was going on. She was, a, I know she was thinking, I, I must be out with public enemy number one, <laughs> you know? And anyway, uh, they told me that they were yelling, screaming, get out of the car, get out of the car, okay? And you know, and so I, I, I opened the door and I get out and I had a bad habit of always putting my keys in my pocket when I got out of the car and and I heard one person yelling, freeze, and another one said, get your hands up. You know, two contradictory commands. And finally I heard this noise behind me and I turned around and there was a, a shotgun staring me in the face. Whoa. I can't. And uh, finally they found out we I was not the person they were looking for. <laughs> But my car matched the description of the car, the vehicle. So, but he, the the policeman that almost killed me with the with the 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 shotgun, hammered me for half an hour, saying, "Never, ever get out of a vehicle like that." You, I just was seconds away from blasting you all your guts all over the freeway. Wow! So that's that was my. Unbelievable! I hadn't even had a ticket before, and suddenly I, I was, I was almost killed. So that wow. was the situation. What an incredible story! And <laughs> and so that that really was uh, such a, an impact in your life that you started doing film. Is that right? Well, yeah, I started writing. I wrote a screenplay, which I thought was the greatest screenplay ever written. Okay, and uh, I was going to solve the 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 firearms controversy. So I wrote this screenplay and I thought it was the greatest film ever written. I was young, I didn't know anything. So I got it to, I had a lot of chutzpah. I got it to all the major uh, studios, most of the major producers, and they actually read it. And they called me in and had meetings with me, which astounded me. But they all pretty much said the same thing. They said, Eugene, I've never read a script like this in my life. It's so different. I don't think we can 
can do it because we don't know if it will make money. And I'm, I just was flabbergasted. They told me, they said, you should learn your craft, study screenwriting, and then come back with a screenplay and, and we'll consider it. Wow. This is amazing. <laughs> this is amazing. So um, in your bio, uh, I read that you worked at a school. So tell us, the, oh. what, was the, what was the name of the school and, and, and something about STARS being teaching the classes? Tell us about that, Eugene. Well, I tried to get into UCLA and USC because they were the best known schools in the area in, uh, in film. Uh, but I couldn't get in because I didn't have the grades. And even if I had got the grades, I didn't have the tuition. So one day I was just dejected. I was on Hollywood Boulevard. I was living in Hollywood where I wanted to be, the place I wanted to be. But I was staring down. I had my head hung low, looking at the stars in Hollywood Boulevard and walking down, the, down Hollywood Boulevard. I looked up and I saw a sign that said film school opening. So I thought, wow. So I walked in and I talked to the person in charge. And I said, I would like to take classes here. Is it possible? And, and he said, well, we won't have classes for several months. But we are looking for more staff. If you want to help us, if you want to work for the school, you can take the classes for free. So suddenly I had both a job and an education at the same time I had to say yes. Wow. So, and I started working there. And I was looking, when I was signing people up for classes, I looked at the list. And then if you were signed, if you wanted to take a class in comedy, you could study with Lucille Ball. If you wanted to study directing, Orson Welles was teaching directing. I thought, oh my God, this is different than any other school I've ever seen. It, it's not people with credentials, teaching credentials, teaching the classes. It's actually the stars on Hollywood Boulevard. Incredible. They're teaching the classes. So what was the name of the school? Sherwood Oaks Experimental College. Okay, Sherwood Oaks Experimental College. And how long did you work there? I worked there for several years. And I took a lot of courses. Wow. So this is really intriguing. What do you think about this, Paul? Have you ever heard of a school where movie stars are the teachers? Other than, you know, master class. No, that, man, what? what an experience of maybe been part of my goodness so i, I and, and you've kind of answered my questions but my first question was where did all this takes take place so hollywood but um like what year was this and then you said discotheque so i'd imagine this was in the 70s yeah late so 70s. 70s well actually it was it was the school started in the early 70s yeah wow amazing amazing and uh where was uh when you were living in the garage in this home, uh, in this two-story home, was this all in Hollywood? No, this was in Fullerton. In Fullerton, yes. okay, but in California, you, you were yes. getting closer and, and mm -hmm. closer to Hollywood. Okay. Yes. <laughs> when I but, got older, I finally moved to Hollywood. <laughs> wow, yeah. amazing. But uh, yeah, how incredible would that have been to have taken directing from Orson Welles or or comedy from Lucille Ball. Oh my goodness! So did you oh, get? Oh, it was a amazing school. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and you got a chance to study with Lucille Ball and with Orson Welles, or no? Actually, I didn't get into those classes, and I'll <laughs> tell you why. Usually, you didn't get into a class unless it was not full. If they were paying all the the spaces, and they were small classes, like 10, 15 people. So when they were full you couldn't get in, but I got into a lot of writing and producing classes. So I studied, my first writing teacher was Sid Field. Have you ever heard of Sid Field? Yeah. And he read my screenplays and he let me read his screenplays. Wow. And he told me, he said, you're writing in a whole new genre. Don't stop. Eventually the, 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 the industry is going to accept this genre. Mm -hmm. So 
he, I mean, and other teachers told me that too. I had a lot of teachers who were, you know, accomplished writers in the industry. So, can I ask how much uh, would it cost for a class with Lucille Ball or Orson Welles? Well, it wasn't that much money. That was the amazing thing. It was to make, they were kind of like almost donating their time, but it mostly went to the school to keep it going, to keep the school operating. When you were working there, Eugene, did you happen to see any Hollywood stars that would show up to teach class? Okay, okay let me tell you what happened. After I finished studying there, I went home to my little apartment in Hollywood and I was kind of depressed because I figured I was going to be a big name in Hollywood, you know, just like the teachers, you know, and I was, ooh, I was, you know, I was flabbergasted that I wasn't getting anywhere. And uh, 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 there were students there that did very well. I mean, one of the students there was uh, a guy named Sylvester Stallone. He was one of the other students there. And, and then there was a guy named uh, James Cameron. He was a student there. So I was thinking these guys are doing very well. And look at me, nothing's happening, okay? And so I was a wannabe. So I invited some other students who had went to the school to my living room in Hollywood. And I said, uh, and, they, and only five people showed up. So there were six of us in my living room. And I said, write down on a piece of paper what credit you want on your first feature film. And they all, everybody wrote down what credit they wanted. And then I said, well, now we know what credits we want. Let's brainstorm what is that film going to be like? What is it going to be about? Then 18 months later, we screened that film during the Cannes Film Festival in France. And filmmakers from around the world gathered around us. They all wanted to work with us. And that's how we, I, that's how Film Artist Network was born. FAN for short, F-A-N. FAN was, and I ran that organization for 20 years. Wow. An organization of filmmakers. And uh, we made so many films. And the problem was that then we said, oh my God, we have another problem that has to be solved. Our films are not making, not making us enough money. We're figuring each film is going to make enough money that we can make our next film. And we thought, wow, what can we do? We had another brainstorming meeting, <laughs> but this time in France, we had a, a brainstorming meeting. What are we going to do so that we can be more successful in this industry? And we said, we've got to get rid of some of the gatekeepers. Okay. So what we decided to do, we decided to build our own sales and marketing company and distribute our films around the world. So we formed a company called FAD, Film Artist Distribution. What's in is in, FAD. <laughs> and we sold our films at markets around the world. We had offices at the Cannes Film Market on the French Riviera. We had offices at the, in Santa Monica at the AFN. We had offices at markets around the world. And we did that for 11 years. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So that's the, practically the story of my life. <laughs> but I still haven't made a solution, Phil. Yes. And this is what your focus is now about. Um, it was um, April Showers, is that? A solution film or was that is it was this before april showers was before your the concept of solution films well what i do is i i, I actually teach a course on the evolution of the solution film and it's part of the evolution april showers is part because the april showers was written and directed by a survivor of columbine oh wow so this is based on a true story then right you yeah Yes, it's inspired by a true story because he invents a different school shooting in here because in the real, in the true life, his girlfriend was one of those that was killed and he was one of the survivors at Columbine. So he invented characters similar to the, 
himself and his girlfriend in the film. And uh, it and and it was it opened in theaters on the tenth anniversary of Columbine. Wow, I'm yeah. so I am so sorry for what happened, and that was such a nationwide, you know, story when it broke. It was just horrendous, and we all were just in awe. We couldn't believe what we were seeing. Um, how is he doing now? Are you still in touch with him, Eugene? Well, we had a little falling out. I don't want to get into that. <laughs> but I wanted certain changes to be made in the script. And he kept on telling me, you're a producer, not a screenwriter. So, and I'm a producer. I'm a, a writer-director. So why are you telling me to make these changes? And what I told him was, I said, if you don't make these changes, then it's going to get an R rating. And it's not going to get to the audience that you want to see this film yeah. because it's not about the perpetrators. It's about the victims and how they're affected by something like mm -hmm. this. Yeah. You know, how they have to live with it. And so um, he didn't want to make the changes. And so we ended up getting an R rating. We had a deal with quite a few theaters to play the film if it was PG-13 but it got an R rating and uh, we had to four wall it in theaters throughout the United States because we didn't get that big theater chain that we were hoping. So it's a long story. <laughs> Thank you for explaining that. Over to you, Paul. Yeah, that's, it's so, it's so funny that, uh, you know, these battles can, can, can tank a film. And I, you know, I think as a producer, you do know better. I mean, uh, sometimes better than, than the writer director because you know the business side of it, the mechanics. So that's that's too bad that he didn't listen to you on on this project. But you know, I guess you live and you learn. And uh, where can these films be seen, and uh, or where, where can we see your work, Eugene? Okay, well, April Showers is available. I mean, it's available on, uh, um, I guess, streaming around the world. It's still available, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, but lead the way won't be available on streaming. Start uh, it's going to start on Amazon and a couple of other streamers in uh, on uh, January thirteenth on uh, uh, Friday the thirteenth. So we'll be <laughs> we'll be releasing the same time as a lot of horror films. <laughs> but one thing you should know is that a solution film like a horror film. You don't need a lot of money and you don't need stars because the stars of the film are the solutions. So it does more than just entertain. It, it does more than just make you forget about your problems. It actually offers possible solutions to the problems that we face every day. Wow, this is incredible. This is an incredible concept. Um, and I want to ask Paul what he thinks about that solution oriented films. Your next project, Eugene, is scheduled for 2023 and you are going to tackle the homeless crisis. Uh, that should be an incredible. Paul, what do you think about this solution oriented <laughs> films? I, I like that. And I like the fact that it doesn't take a lot of money to get it made like a horror film, like you said, and you don't need stars. So there's almost no excuse. And there's so many problems out there that I feel, yeah. you know, the, the topic can explore so many. There are so many options of films that you can make, especially as an independent filmmaker or a small filmmaker. And are other directors or producers making solution films? Or is this so new that no one's really heard of it except for us right here? And it's we're at the, we're at the beginning of something hopefully wonderful. That's what I hope. That's why it's another reason why it's called Lead the Way, because we want to lead the way for talented filmmakers around the world to start making films in this new genre. Because so many new filmmakers make horror films and they're all trying to scare up the same audience. They're competing against each other. So why not make a film that inspires, that uplifts, that makes the audience feel that anything is possible. I love your originality. I love that it's a different genre. 
Actually, it is a different genre, isn't it, Paul? Um, isn't it, Eugene? It's it's a, it's an entirely different category, solution films? Yes, the whole structure is different. And that's why originally they didn't uh, want to try to make my, my scripts because they said, this is totally different. You know, like what you do is you take a solution to a problem and you weave it into the fabric of the film. Okay, like if you look at that man, that's Patrick Lee standing behind me, announcing his run for the presidency in that that uh, that scene behind me. And people are avoiding him. And the reason they're avoiding him is they think he's wearing VR goggles, that he's in some other world. He doesn't even know where he is. But you know what those that contraption that he's wearing actually is? It's a new invention called New Eye that allows the legally blind to see. Sometimes for the first time in their life, they see their spouse or their children, and it can be very emotional. Wow. And there are over 250 million people in the world who could be considered legally blind, and they don't know about this new invention. Amazing. Amazing. So um, I just, um, I'm just, I, I love the concept so much. And I, I just switched the photo out uh, on the second screen here on your second screen, Eugene, to the really great poster that you sent me uh, a few minutes ago. Um, it's beautiful. Thank you so much for sending that. And this is the one, it's a little bit bigger, so people can check it out uh, even more in detail. It's a beautiful poster and it's got, um, on the left, it looks like it's got an award there. Can you tell us about that? Yes, we only en entered one film festival because we figured on a solution film, it's most people are not gonna, what is this? You know what I mean? It's so different. Yeah. And a lot of them have categories, the film festival. Plus it takes so much time and so much money. And we want to get these solutions out to the world. So it's important for us not to spend two years in film festivals. So we entered one film festival, the Chinese American Film Festival, because our main character is Chinese American. <laughs> and we won best US independent feature film. Congratulations. <laughs> and that's the Golden Angel Award. That's what it's called, the Golden Angel Award. Aww. Yeah, That is so fitting, isn't it, Paul? It sure is. Now, let me ask you this. When you set out to write this film or, or um, and you wrote the script, Eugene, mm -hmm. uh, did you envision a Chinese American or a Chinese uh, actor or did he just happen to fit the, the part there? Well, the funny thing was that um, I worked with my, my daughter, who is another AJ, <laughs> Amanda Jean. And uh, I asked her because she's younger and I wanted her opinion. And originally it, it, the main character was going to be a, a Native American man. And the woman in that picture with him, his sidekick, the one who runs for vice president is a Native American woman. woman. And there's a lot of Native Americans in the film. And you'll, you'll have to watch the film to understand mm -hmm. why. And, um, but, my daughter said, no, make the main character Asian American because you've got a, even a bigger audience and then make the, the sidekick, the second character, the other lead, the lead female lead, uh, a Native American. So that's what I did. And I, so I rewrote the script on the advice of my daughter. Oh, by the way, she's also an actress and singer and she's in the film. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, hello, AJ, another a another AJ <laughs> in our family. And hello, and thank you so much uh, for your contribution. And then also the 2% Chinese die in me, Eugene, mm -hmm. loves that uh, the, the lead character is uh, Chinese. Is, what do you think, Paul? I, I love it. And it's not like you're telling a Chinese story. It's just a story where the actor happens to be Chinese. You know, it's a, it's a very, I think, American film. Yeah. You know, I'm talking about our elections and, you know, who needs to be there. And it might even address or at least make people think about the fact that 
a lot of times I think in, in minority uh, situations, you know, we don't, we're not exposed to autism, you know, blind people. I think that that goes across all cultures, but maybe autism, it's like, you know, that what, just pay attention type of a thing, you know, that I'll, I'll hit you if, if you, if you don't behave type of a thing. So I don't know if it's the same thing in the Chinese culture, but I would imagine that much like the Latino culture, it's kind of the same way where you're not exposed to that growing up, that there is autism, that there is dyslexia, that there are these, you know, a, a, a mental issues, you know, so this might be a good way to get people talking about it as well. But I, I love the fact that it's, uh, it sounds like an American story that happens to have an actor who happens to be Chinese. Yes. And also, I love that you um, also cast Native American uh, indigenous, you know, uh, peoples. I, I love that, Eugene. So thank you, Paul, for that. Okay, and we wanted to, we wanted to make sure that even if this film did not take off, you know, and make money, we wanted to make sure that that solution film continued. Yes, and we set up an a international studio without borders or walls that will specialize in this new genre, just like uh, Blumhouse specialized in low budget horror films. We will specialize in the solution genre. I love this. And Eugene, how can people support you? How can they get a hold of you? How can they follow you? The easiest way is my name. I'm the only Eugene Mandelporn in the world. For good or bad, people can get in touch with me very easily. All I have to Google or Bing me or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> ever they have on their computer they can find me and they can contact me i get calls from people all over the world but the main thing they can do to support us is to see the film yes see the film either go to a theater and see the film or see it stream it on on amazon or or any of the other services that are going to be offering it so that's the thing we have to build our audience whenever you start a new genre you have to build the audience. Absolutely. So again, it's Lead the Way on Amazon. And you are on, uh, people can follow you on Instagram. You're also on Clubhouse. Isn't that right, Eugene? Yes, I'm on Clubhouse too. And just so you know, uh, on um, December 3rd, Saturday, December 3rd, we're going to be showing the trailer and doing a panel discussion with the cast and crew at the Comic-Con L.A., for anybody who's in the LA area, and will be uh, it will be at 1:30 on Saturday, December 3rd, in uh, room one. Well, no, not one. What is it? It's uh, yeah, 105. Wonderful. Okay, so check that out as well. Uh, those of you who are in Los Angeles, that will be surely, uh, truly, will be a fun event. And will they get to meet you there, Eugene? Yes, I'll be there. Yes. Okay, super. All right. Well, um, we, we, you know, we have to start wrapping the show up. Unfortunately, it's gone so fast, but I wanted to do our controversial question and then okay. our heart messages. So here's the controversial question for this week. Okay, here we go. Are books better than television? Okay, I'm going to go over to you, Eugene, first. Are books better than television? Okay. I started as a librarian. That's I was a librarian with the Los Angeles Public Library. <laughs> okay. And what I specialized in was doing non, I was studying non, non book materials. So media was my specialty. And young adults was my specialty. So I would say that the young people are more attracted to visuals. So you've got to go for the TV and the film and the um, um, uh, gaming and the internet because that is where the young people are. But books are important because books are the foundation. That's where the story starts. But if you may, and the film industry is only around for a little over a hundred years, but it is, it has not touched its potential. 
that's what we feel at 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 our our studio it has not touched its potential yet not yet but it will mm -hmm. in the future mm -hmm. okay i love that answer thank you um for that eugene um paul over to you the question is are books better than television i you know what i don't think i can add uh, anything more than what eugene said because books are the are the foundation you know and i i have a passion for reading and I used to read books as I'm even looking around my condo here. I see, you know, I see Bad Monkey, you know, book by uh, Carl Hyacin. I think that's how you, how you say his last name. And of course, I've got my book, The Kama uh, And So books are, are very important, but I find myself reading less and less books. I read all the time, but it's on my phone. You know, I don't I don't know if that really counts, but books are the foundation. Without the books, we wouldn't have turn it you know, into a, a manuscript, into a screenplay so uh but i i think you know just like sugar coating candy you know sugar coating your medicine it's easier for the young people uh to just go well let me just watch the movie and you know the, the, the cliche is always well the book is better than the movie and i think that that will probably almost always be the case because you can explore so much more in five or six hours that it takes to read a book versus an hour and a half that has to be condensed for a film but I think that they're both important, but uh, and books are especially very important. But I, I love everything that Eugene had to say about that. And how coincidental is that that his first, your first job or maybe big job was as a librarian, but in the media side? That's amazing. Great question, AJ. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It's just so amazing that you were a librarian, uh, Eugene, just like Paul said, and. Um, yeah, I loved what you said, Eugene, and I loved your answer, Paul, right? I, I fully agree with you, but I have to say, I love books, you know, the tactile, you know, you pick it up, you have it in your hand. I'll always love books, but, and without books, there, there is no television. That's what I feel. I feel that these, these stories are the ones that um, make television. And so I agree with you, Paul, and I agree with you, Eugene, um, but not not so many um, younger people do read a tremendous, I mean, there are a lot that do, but I do definitely think they, you're right, Eugene, they're visual and they love the movies and, you know, like TikToks and films and, and things like that. So definitely it's video for the young people. All righty, well, thank you so much. And I want to say, Eugene, you have been absolutely wonderful this evening. I've learned so much about you, and um, I hope you've had a fun time. You've been a, an absolute spectacular guest. And now we're going to do our heart messages. Um, it can be a promotion. It can be a shout out. It can be whatever you think uh, the world needs to hear. I'm going to go first. Then I'm going to go to you, Eugene, after me. Then I'm going to go to Paul. Here is my heart message for this week. The power of kindness is often missed or understood, especially when people who consistently show kindness are misjudged as being nice or weak. But kindness is not for pushovers. It's strong, courageous, purposeful, and life-changing. And I love that. So I'm always saying, be kind. Kindness is so wonderful. That's what it's all about because there's many ways to do things, but if you can do it with kindness and love, you know me, I had to mention love. If you can do it with kindness and honey and sweetness, it's always so much better. Okay, over to you, Eugene, for your heart message for this week. Well, I think that the thing, um, and it is kindness too, in a way, Patrick Lee has a whole different way of running for president, a whole different political idea. He's not with any party, and he refuses to say anything bad about anybody else. That's kindness in a way, too. And he tells the other candidates that he's running a totally different race, and he wants them to also not to say bad things to, about other people. And when he does, he uses his money to use what power you have, the contributions to actually solve the problems that the people want solved. So if you contribute to the campaign, 
You're not contributing to him personally. You're contributing to that problem that you want solved. So that's the thing too, solutions to problems. I love it, solutions to problems. And you're right, that is being kind. That was beautifully said, Eugene, thank you. And we take that, all of us to heart, what you said. All righty, Paul, over to you for your heart message for this week, Paul. Our, our favorite, I, Paul Vato. <laughs> thank you, thank you, AJ. Well, I, I think it's, um, you know, th Eugene, thank you for being inspirational and motivational. And it just goes to show you that, you know, in Hollywood, there are a lot of traditions, you know, not necessarily rules. I mean, and, and you know, it's, and there are rules, but, they're, they're, you know, sometimes they're meant to be broken. So something like this, a solution film, which I'd never heard of, but it makes perfect sense because maybe that's what the world needs right now. Uh, and it's probably needed it for a long time, but it takes uh, somebody like Eugene to come forth and do it because anybody else that might've tried it maybe already gave up or didn't see it or didn't see the vision. So don't give up, you know, even if it's not something that's traditionally done in Hollywood, try it, why not? And then who knows, you may create a whole new genre and maybe we'll have all these new filmmakers, like Eugene said, instead of battling each other, making horror films, because that's the easy one as far as, you know, m monetary wise and and uh, script wise and how many actors you need. Do you need famous actors, things like that? Maybe, you know, we have this whole new genre of film where uh, more and more projects will get made. So thank you, Eugene. I, I think don't be afraid to try would be my heart message. And of course, if you want to connect with me, I'm at paulvato.com. And I would appreciate uh, uh, connecting with everyone out here. And if you want to call me, I'm always on OWL with two W's and two L's. Uh, it's a new app. So please just connect with me there. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Paul. And Paul is also on Discord with his own podcast. Be sure to check that out as well and subscribe and support Paul. He's also on Twitter. You can follow him there and Instagram and Facebook. And all so over. all over the place. And he's all such a great guy. <laughs> so you. definitely do that. And also follow Eugene on Instagram and on Clubhouse. And thank you both so much for a wonderful show. I've truly had a great time. I hope you have as well. And until we meet again, bye-bye for now.